got Thompson in motion. Hand off to Taylor, and having a leg wrapped around him, wouldn't let him go as Ayula Akinui. Number 93, who did not play well last week against Post, did not have any tackles. But Akinui, the young man of Nigerian descent, played his high school ball in Staten Island, comes up with a big play. He had him around the ankle, says, Mr. Taylor, Mr. You're not going anywhere, Mr. Bell. And if Akinui did not make that tackle right there, Alan Bell has the sideline, and it's seven points. Yep. Buffalo's back in the game. Third and nine from the 25. Hopsha has not blitzed much today. If they try to get the young quarterback here. He steps away from traffic. He's got some yardage. Has the first down. And shoved back. May not have it as he was pushed back by Barrett Boyd. Let's see where they mark his forward progress. Boyd coming up with a good hit. And they'll mark it shy of the first down. It appeared that he was forward enough. Then Boyd with a great hit knocked him back from the marker. And the one thing, Alan Bell, even, even though he didn't get the ball, he was in the middle of the field. He got that key block to, to let Scott loose. Curtis Scott, he, he's looking for a receiver. He makes the decision right there. He's going to run the ball. Look at Allen, Allen Bell. He makes the block. Scott is scrambling. He comes up just a little short. It is short, fourth and less than one. Scott handing off. Thompson, the big guy, has the first down inside the 15 as he went off left tackle. Salgado and Deacons wrapped him up along with Brown, but he did pick up the first down. So Ray Hobson, the 220-pound senior from Amherst, New York, who hasn't run the football much this year, only five times for 11 yards before tonight, comes up with the first down. First and 10 at the 14-yard line. Out over the ball, sophomore center Rich Lowe, the anchor of this young offensive line. Scott under pressure, throws in the end zone, Nap got a piece of it, but could not hang on. Jimmy Salgado was defending on the play, but I'll tell you, Cliff Scott throws the ball as hard as we've seen any quarterback so far, Marty, this season. And that's the first time all night that we saw Cliff Scott get the ground. Excellent pressure by middle linebacker, number 48, Jeff Brown, comes right up the middle on a blitz, gets an excellent hit, causes the ball. Nap should have had it. It was an excellent throw. But that is the first time all night, Barry, that we've seen some pressure on Scott. Well, we've seen Knapp do what he can do so effectively catch in traffic. He's got great concentration. Second and 10 from the 14. Scott looking at the end zone for Knapp. Just couldn't catch up with it as he threw it hard to the corner. And defending on the play was Barrick Boyd. And the clock stops with 7.22 to go. And a third and 10 coming up from the 14. Scott getting up slowly. Appears to be shaken up on that play. Uh, pressure on this quarterback who came in, Marty, with a sore shoulder. They thought it might be separated. He'd missed the last game against Westminster. Played well, in the 7-3 loss against Montclair State. And it's important for Buffalo to get some points. They've been in the red zone four times tonight. They've come away empty-handed every time. Third and ten for Scott. And throws that one incomplete. Vince Gallion was closest to the ball, as you saw from our end zone camera. Got a well-thrown ball. Now Scott, 6 for 15 for 89 yards, and they'll bring on the field goal unit. Tommy McLaughlin, who had one blocked earlier on their first drive of the ball game, had a 43-yard field goal block. Of course, it was returned upfield. It'll be a 32-yard attempt. The line of scrimmage at the 22, where they'll mark the ball. So McLaughlin, the senior, had a bad year last year. One for four this year. Blocked again by Billy Deacons. And Billy Deacons comes up with yet another big play for the Flying Dutchman. Billy Deacon is just turning that corner so quick. He's jumping off the ball so quick that the wingman on the field goal, field goal team. We have a penalty. Legal formation on the offense. Penalties declined. First down, Hofstra. As we look at it, Barry, Billy Deacon comes off this corner so quick, and again, he stretches out and he blocks it. Joe Gardy will give him a game ball if Hofstra can win this game. That's two big plays 
on two consecutive field goal attempts. 17 tackles last week for the young man from Garden City. Played in Garden City High School for Tom Flatley. Championship team here at Long Island. And a little doubted over there. It must feel good when you make a big play, Marty. Well, you know, you were out there trying, and you're trying to lift your team right there. It was a key play at a key time. Beisel under pressure off the hand of Cox and falls incomplete. Mark Anderson, number three, looking to pick it off. But again, Beisel had initial time, and then pressure. He started to feel the heat, threw it with a man draped around him. And now Beisel's stats, not all that impressive tonight, as we'll find out in a moment. And the one thing Beisel has to realize is when he gets wrapped up like this, you're backed up on your own field. Don't make a mistake. Don't throw the interception. Right there, the ball was tipped. It was too high for Mark Cox to make a catch. It could have been a big mistake. In trouble, screens it out to Cox. Cox avoids one tackle, but taken down at the 15-yard line by Trevor Nixon. And Nickerson playing an outstanding game. Cox trying to do those jitterbug moves to get away as they set up the screen nicely, but the defense still was right there on Mark Cox. So Beisel now 7 for 14 for only about uh, 37 yards. And one interception and one touchdown. Six and a half minutes ago, first half hops to leading 14-0. In motion goes Trebek. Flag on the play. Beisel in trouble and taken down again by John Canastero, his third sack of the game. Now, Canastero didn't start last week. Todd Schaefer, a freshman, started ahead of him. And Canastero said, hey, <laughs> I'm a junior. I should be in there starting, and he certainly earned it tonight with three sacks early. Well, Barry, I don't want to repeat myself, but what they're doing is they've got the also offensive lineman. They've got him baffled. They're running stunts, and then all of a sudden they run it straight up. The Hawks, their offensive linemen, they're not keying in on one play, and they're not passing the defensive linemen off like they should be. Now, Joe Gardy not very happy right now. He wasn't very happy in the first half last week when his club trailed post at halftime. against the offense is declined. Fourth down. So Hofstra will have to punt it. Fourth down and long yardage, and they're pinned way back on the second yard line. Let's see if they try for a block here. Pitcher standing in the end zone. Two men back and around midfield. Prelowitz and Lesmeister. Lesmeister, a speedster. Pitcher just gets this one away. Taken upfield and around the 39-yard line by Prelowitz. A fair catch. And Buffalo again will have outstanding field position. A 32-yard punt, no return. And with 5.48 to go, Sam Sanders club still very much in this game as they trail 14 to nothing. Out of town tonight, we've got Trenton State at Glassboro in a big battle of uh, New Jersey powerhouses. And Trenton State leading 6 to nothing. Glassboro 3 and 0 this year. And St. John's and Fairleigh Dickinson in the first quarter. And the Redmond lead 7 to nothing. We'll keep you posted on the scores throughout the evening. Coming up, Scott complete out of the backfield as he finds the freshman and Stroman gives him a first down inside the 25 yard line at around the 22. Don't forget coming up at halftime we'll take a look at our sports channel Metro College Bowl and we'll update you on some of the big matchups coming up tomorrow around the metropolitan area. And Scott drilling that one for a first and 10 at the 23 yard line. Options, vulnerable pass defense. On the draw, Bell runs into Vince Gallion, who upends him after a short gain of maybe a yard. Five, ten to go, first quarter, first half rather, as Stroman leaves. And the tight end, Ray Burby, checks into the lineup. Burby, a good receiver. They haven't thrown to him so far tonight. Knapp will draw coverage at the bottom of your screen from... Jimmy Salgado. In motion is the fullback Polanski. Got looking that way. Now throwing out of the backfield. Complete to Knapp. Short game for Knapp at the 17-yard line. Jeff Brown, the middle linebacker on the goal. Let us correct that score on the Trenton State game. It is Glassboro State now leading Trenton State 6 to nothing. As we mentioned, Glassboro coming into the game 3-0. Trenton State, of course, played Hofstra 
in the quarterfinals of the NCAA Division Three playoffs last year, a game you saw here on Sports Channel. What do you look for here on third and four, Marty? Well, I tell you, the way that they've been passing and, and so successful, I would anticipate Scott running the ball. <laughs> Good choice, Marty, as you see him run into the end zone for six points, and Glenn Scott with his second rushing touchdown, an 18-yard scamper, and the Buffalo Bulls on the board, and some of the fans from Buffalo aren't enjoying it. I tell you, Barry, sometimes you just got to call it like you <laughs> see it. <laughs> and I tell you, Barry, I'm very impressed with Cliff Scott. He's not a freshman out there on the field. He's the leader. He's taking control of this offense. He drops back. He's playing with confidence. And when he doesn't see a receiver open, he's going to run the ball. Scott has rushed six times for 37 yards and one touchdown. Tommy McLaughlin to try the extra point. Redwanski the holder. It's up. And it is good. So this team, which hadn't scored in nine quarters, has been knocking on the door all night. And finally, Cliff Scott runs it in from 18 yards, and they're very much in this ball game. Joe Gardy, who was uh, not worried about a letdown, says, hey, we're in this uh, tough ball game. As we'll take another look at Cliff Scott's scamper here. And here it is. He goes back to play action fake. He fakes the dive. He fakes the reverse. Now he's made the decision. There's no receivers. His receivers kept running their routes to take the defenders with them. And right here, here's Scott. Exactly like I called it, Barry. He's going to run it in for a touch. I, I ought to ask you more often, Marty, what's going to happen out there, especially when the play starts. <laughs> well, Barry, see, I've got this hole right here from me. It's hard for me to see it. Here's Joe Gardner. He's got to be concerned. He said all week that he had a great deal of respect for Cliff Scott, and he had a great deal of respect for Bill. I think he's being surprised tonight with the way Buffalo's defense is manhandling his offensive lineman. No question about it. That has to be the major surprise. He did have a lot of uh, respect for Scott and Knapp, and certainly Alan Bell. They've done a good job stopping Bell. He's not been a factor, but they certainly have not been able to stop Cliff Scott. Well, Barry, whether he's a factor or not, what he's doing is he's taking defenders with him. Drawing attention. Bell has uh, rushed nine times for 14 yards. They did a great job shutting down Bruska last week. He had only 15 yards to post a fine tailback. Out of bounds, there's an option this year in college football that you could take it at the 35. And let's see if Hopch exercises that option. Thanks again. Illegal procedure against the Bulls. Defensive coach Bobby Doyle with a word or two for the defensive line particularly. Well, Mr. Scott completing the scoring drive of four plays and 40 yards in less than two minutes with a nice 18-yard run, his second rushing touchdown of the year. And as I mentioned uh, before, a transfer from Marshall, you could see why he was a, a Division I uh, prospect. And as we mentioned, he came home to Buffalo, says, I want to help rebuild this program into a, a 1AA power. And plus, I, th I think he felt that he had an opportunity to play and get recognized for his athletic ability. Sometimes these players, they, they don't want to be a backup. They don't want to sit and wait their turn. He, he realized if he went to Buffalo, he had the opportunity to play right away and be an impact player. So it'll be back at the 30-yard line. And Carlos Smith is deep, along with Mark Cox at the 10-yard line. Smith, a speedster from Maryland, where he set a lot of records in junior college, playing for Montgomery Junior College. And let's see if they kick it away from Cox. Nope, Cox will get it. That's the ball. To the 30, dances away, gets away from one guy, and so Cypher. Their leading tackler wrapped him up, couldn't get away from him, and then gang tackled down by four shirts there. Well, the one thing about Mark Cox, he's not going to go down with just one player. Right there, perfect example of second effort. It took five Buffalo players to bring him down. So George Beisel will look to get Hostia going here. He's eight for 14 for only 37 yards. Remember, this guy threw for 507 yards last week. But Buffalo hacked him five times for 32 yards in losses. And they've knocked down the ball three times, and they've put him on his back quite a few times. And they've also picked off a pass of Bison. Rolling left. Camera had trouble on his block. He throws in complete for Millington. Look at Bison wrapped up in the backfield. However, did he get that ball away? And you see Chris Camera getting up from the deck there. John Canistero putting pressure on. And Hofstra offensive line really having a problem right here. Bison 
lot of heat. Mike Casuelo and Chris Cameron, the tackles, having problems. And we talked about it earlier. George Bisel, he's got to understand, if you got that much pressure, don't force yourself in that situation. See a ball. Go down. You're in a running shoot situation where you can pick up long yards. Second and 10 to the 28. 353 to go first half. Cox for five. Cox looking for more. He's got it. Down the left sideline, still on his feet, and driven out of bounds at around the 35-yard line by Bill Stonecipher. I'll tell you, if it wasn't for Mark Cox in this ball game, how should be in some trouble right now as he goes 42 yards and is close to 100 yards in this one already on very few carries. Well, what does P.W. Post head coach last week say? Tom Moore said, if I had a guy that had his ability, I would utilize Mark Cox every play. He said in a in situation, you don't see Mark Cox getting the recognition. Right now, he's carried the ball five times for 96 yards. Again, they'll keep it on the ground for Cox. Cox, look at him, keep driving with those great legs of his. And he gets close to the 30-yard line, a pick of around seven before Canistero brought him down. Marty, we go back to the stats. Cox just saw this team giving up almost six yards to carry on the ground. They've certainly played tough pass defense tonight and getting in on Beisel, but they haven't run the football more, Hofstra. Why not? But they're a run-and-shoot uh, team, and Joe already said the worst thing you can do is second-guess your offense. He's going to stick with his game plan. They're a run. Here's Agoski keeping it on the ground as they give the blow, and Agoski picks up big yardage, close to the first down. They might bring the chains in to measure. Nope, it's enough for the first down. So Al Hagotsky with big numbers. And Hofstra well over 100 yards on the ground because Hagotsky has picked up at least 25 yards or so. They've gained 122 yards on the ground here in uh, the first half. Three minutes to go, first half. First and 10 to 23. Hagotsky again on the ground. Cuts back. And down inside the 10-yard line. Agoski setting up a goal-to-go -goal situation with another first down, a 13-yard pickup. Well, the one thing we're going to have to do it, either at halftime or after, after the game, Barry, we're going to have to ask Joe Gordy, where'd you come with these running plays? You're a run-and-shoot team. You told us two